Hi everyone, today we're gonna do an 8 a.m. $300 unboxing of two anime figures. We got Rixia Mao from Trails to Zero and Trails of Azure, and Eris Grey Rat again from Mushoku Tensei. I had her in my last figure unboxing video, but this time we got a different figure. That Both of these figures just came out about a week ago. I got them from Ami Ami. They shipped very quickly through DHL shipping. It's a little too early to do this video, but rise and shine, Earth sign, because we're about to get started. Let's start first with Rixia Mao. It is a 1 8 scale figure. And my first complaint, when I, this will probably be my only complaint, but is that the box is just too wide. Like, look at this thing, man. Look at her in the middle. And then look at all this extra width that we have here. We don't need that. I like to keep my boxes, as you probably already know. Just in case I ever need to like rebox something for like transportation, like if I ever move or anything like that. So, you know, I just didn't need all this extra width in my storage, but it is what it is. We have some fine art on the back of the box of her wielding her sword, and some nice art on the side of the box as well, left hand side. And it says sculpted by Hirotoshi Nakamura on the bottom. You guys can't see that, but I can see it. And you'll probably see it if I give a script some CC subtitles to the video. So let's unbox this so the sun can stop reflecting off of it. Okay, so first thing that I want to share is the fact that this is the only figure that I've ever received that came with an instruction manual for some reason. I guess the head pops off, as you can see in the top right. And then you could stick it back on, which is a little bit creepy, but okay, you know, decapitated waifus, just like Nami in our last video. No instructions on the back, just the front page, but let's see how this goes. Our base has butterflies, purple and white. Kind of cute. It feels also very thick. It's a very thick, hard base. Definitely well-constructed, sturdy. All right, I've got her on her base. As you can see, her sword looks broken, which concerned me at first, but it has like a little hole in it, so it slips on. It almost feels like I'm putting a USB into the computer when I do that. Let me see, let's back this up. That's basically her with her whole sword. <laughs> There you go. That's her with her whole sword. I don't know what kind of vibe this gives me. As you can see, it's got the red circle and then bluish in the middle with some sort of design. And it kind of gives me a vibe of like, obviously, Final Fantasy VII, you know, clouds. Whatever his sword is called. Oh, isn't it the Buster Sword? Yeah, so her sword gives me a vibe of Cloud's Buster Sword, but also mixed with like a Legend of Zelda vibe. That's what the hilt of the sword makes me think anyway. With that sort of red jewel in it. I don't know if everybody agrees, but I think it's kind of Zelda mixed with Final Fantasy. If you pull her up close, you'll see that she's got the white ribbon in her hair. Kind of like wavy bluish hair. Her eyes look like a slight purple tint. Very light purple little grayish i guess like a grayish purple she's got her big opi which is why she's arguably my favorite character from the cross bell section of the trail series very well designed whatever you want to call this it kind of looks like a banner like you would see hanging from a castle wall if that makes sense instead of just a dress because look at the shape it's like a rectangle with sort of like a triangulish bottom. So that just screams like a banner that you would see hanging somewhere. And then she's got these, I guess, metal... It looks like a metal boot with maybe like a thigh-high sock coming out of it. And then like an anklet on top that matches the boot, I would assume. She's got a metal glove on her left hand, which is something I would have never realized in-game. And I kind of find intriguing. I'm assuming that she could probably like shoot daggers out of it or something. I don't know if it's just a defensive thing or if it has a secret like offensive mechanism to it. 
but it makes me feel like it's probably for tag purposes as well. The back of her banner-like dress seems to have some heart shapes. So, seems like a corset on the side. I don't know if that's the right word. I'm not a genius on women's clothing, but... And I guess gauntlets on both arms. Like, she's got that metal piece that I showed you guys over the left gauntlet. But even here, she's got a gauntlet on her right arm, it looks like. And obviously, since, you know, this is a of-age character, I guess we gotta take a sneak peek, right? What's going on with the pantsu situation? Looks like a very thin, blackish pantsu. Almost looks like no pantsu, but there's like a very thin, black layer of pantsu. I guess a G-string. So yeah, very nice figure. I actually haven't completed the, I guess, setup for this figure. It has two other pieces. I'm not sure where those pieces go. Somewhere in the back, I'm assuming. I think maybe from here, these circles. Let's see. It's kind of hard to tell from the instruction. Oh, they look like they hook up top. Okay. So up top here, there are these little holes in her, I guess, dress. We'll keep calling it a dress, even though I still think it doesn't even look like an article of clothing. I think it looks like a decoration. But we're going to hook those up top. I don't know if it matters which one goes where. I thought they were a different color at first because one side is red. And the other side is purple, but technically they're both just purple because you want to look at the back side, I suppose. This one looks like it goes here. And I could be wrong. Okay, I think I got those back ribbons in the right spot. So I guess the back is actually supposed to look like this. Honestly, I think the figure was fine even without the ribbons. <laughs> I think all of that extra work didn't necessarily give it much of an enhancement. I think it was already a 10 out of 10 figure. But if you like a little bit of extra flair in your figure, then there you go. Boom. Some back ribbons that were a little tricky to get in, mostly because I think I was trying to put them in the wrong spot. And it definitely has to be very precise, even though they look very similar to slots and the ribbons themselves. You have to put them in the right spot. I think they're a little bit of a different I want to say circumference, even though that's not the right word. Width, length, yeah, maybe different width and length, a different area. All right, cool. So that's Rixia Mao. If you want to learn more about the Trail series, usually I like to give a little bit of a insight on what the games that these characters are from are like, or maybe even talk about the anime a bit. But I've already created a whole video about trails, so if you want to learn more about the trail series, go watch that video. I think it was about 6 minutes to 8 minutes in length, and I think it's a very good one. So check it out. Next up we got another Eris Grey Rat figure. Like I said in my last video, we unboxed an Eris Grey Rat figure that came out about maybe 2 or 3 months ago. And now this one came out about a week ago. It's by Karokawa. It's a 1 7th scale figure. The sculptor is Takatori, and the paintwork was done by someone called Ikoshi. It doesn't seem like we'll have to put this figure together, although I do see some instructions on the bottom of the box, so that's somewhat suspicious, but let's open it and see what's up. So here's our Eris Grey Rat. The base looks like some wooden, I guess, boards that you would see on a household floor. And this is the full figure. I guess she's undressing, I don't know if she's undressing or putting clothes on, it kind of looks like she's pushing her shorts or whatever that is down. So I guess she's undressing. She's got her thigh-high socks on, her long, flowing, fiery red hair, red eyes. You get the nice cake view. She's got her white shirt on with a little, I guess, letter protective vest black hairband in her hair. I was gonna say bow. I'm so used to saying bow, but yeah, that's a hairband, guys. It 
It's not an overly complicated figure. <laughs> you know exactly why you're buying it when you buy it, I'll tell you that much. But whenever they make an Aeris Grey Rat figure, I'm pretty much guaranteed to buy it. I think there's another one coming up within a year or so that I also have kind of my sights on. But this is definitely one of my favorite characters in terms of like buying figures or seeing artwork of, so... It's like a done deal for me. If I see it, I'm buying it. I would talk a little bit about Mushoku Tensei, but I'm sure you guys already know it, and I already talked about it the last time I unboxed a figure of her, so... Voila! What you see is what you get. If you want to see some very cultured Eris Grey Rat art, make sure you join the Discord. A link will be in the description, because I have plenty of Eris Grey Rat art to share if anyone would like to indulge in such sinful pleasures. But yeah, there you go, guys. These were our two figures for today. And now that I've shared this with you, I am going to I'm gonna end this video. And I'm going to go and continue my playthrough of Trails of Azure because I am on chapter two and I need to chug along through this, you know, my good old trail stuff. Thanks for watching, guys. Sub if you enjoyed the content, leave a like, and comment. Tell me what you thought of the figures. See ya.